video literally hasn't made any sense, has it? No one's watching, guys. That was a full-on donut. Alright, oh, so hello there. We are going to have another chat. So today we are going to be chatting about car spotting. So I've done a video about how to car spot in Monaco. Um, link will be here. Uh, so you should go check that out. But now I'm going to do one which I probably should have done before um, doing the Monaco one because that one's very specific. One which is just basically on car spotting in general. So car spotting started in about, what, 2005, 2006, something like that. And um, it's really, really, really grown in recent years, as you can see at events such as top marks or different things like that. Bit of a big drop there. Bit of a really, really big drop there, so I might slow down a bit. There's basically guys or girls going out um, into towns such as Monaco, London, Dubai, basically places where there are cars, it could be anywhere, and um, taking photos or videos of cars and posting them online. Cars mostly being rare supercars, the rarer the better, because you want to get content that people want to see, not easily, and that most of the time they can only see if they go online. It's something that's actually growing really fast. There are hundreds of thousands of car spotters now around the world with combined millions of followers. Companies are starting starting to grab um, more of a sensation of how important and influential car spotters can be. So they have all of their followers, right? So people like, let's say, Shmi 150 or Supercars of London, and people really listen and value to what they have to say. People like Mercedes or different or Ford or some different um, brands are starting to realize that and sort of getting on board and getting uh, car spotters to do advertising for them or giving their new cars uh, that they've just released to be filmed by car spotters because they know that car spotters will be able to reach a new and large audience. I'm basically going to run you through the basic things that you need. Um, so the first thing that you need is you need obviously a large knowledge on the car industry obviously because um, you're going to need to be able to recognize which cars are worth filming and which cars aren't. So supercars that to people who wouldn't know would maybe look like supercars such as Ferrari 458 Spyder or a car like that won't actually be considered a proper, proper supercar um, in the spotting world. You know, they want things like limited edition tuned cars or Bugattis or things like that. And, um, whoa! And, uh, uh, this is fun. First of all, you need to decide how you're going to be doing it. So, are you going to be doing photography or are you going to be doing videography? Because those are two completely different aspects and it's very, very hard if you're a studying or you've got a normal day job, which most of the time you do, um, to do both because both are very time consuming. So you want to pick photography or videography. So if you're doing photography, you want to open a Flickr or a Facebook page as well as an Instagram and a Twitter so that you're present on all forms of social media for people to be able to find you. And if you're doing video, you want to open a YouTube page as well. So those are the differences. Obviously, you're not going to open a YouTube if you're a photographer. So, once you've done that, I would say the most important at the moment would probably be Instagram. That's the one people are sort of following the most. You then want to get yourself some equipment. So, that again depends on what you're doing. If you decided you're going to take photos, then get yourself a DSLR. I'm no expert in perf you know, perfect cameras for night shots, etc, etc. But I know that you need a good DSLR and you do also want a tripod. So, for example, for a night shot. Because it's very hard to get the clear images you want at night time if you don't have a tripod. Then you want to be able to edit well, so you need to get good editing software. I'm not entirely sure which would be the best for that, but you want to get a good editing software. I usually do my stuff on iPhoto when I'm taking photos, but I am probably not the best in the world to, um, to go by. Um, where were we? So yeah, sorry, I'm kind of losing track here. Um, hello. So we were talking about photography. Yes, yeah, so if you're doing photography, I um, am not no expert. I'm more in the video side of things. Um, so let's talk about that a bit more. So the key to having a good YouTube channel is having a lot of videos on it because YouTube is all about consistency and you want to be able to give constant um, uploads to your subscribers because or else they lose interest. These are some 
some of the craziest roads. Why is this tunnel one way? Huh, that's a drop. That is a massive drop. Holy cow. Basically, I have no idea where I am. This is ridiculous. This is the most impossible video to film of all time because I'm having way too much fun and I'm losing track. I think I was talking about YouTube. I'm not entirely sure. YouTube, you want, yeah, you want to have constant uploads because if you're slagging behind people who lose interest, I'm pulling in because there's no way I'm gonna finish this video if I'm driving. Yes, so to <laughs> recap from the start, I'm sorry, this is basically the most terrible Wednesday video ever. But, so if you wanna start uh, being a car spotter, photographer, YouTuber, try not to be both. Um, if you're gonna be one, I would advise YouTube because that's really growing at the moment. Um, photography, there's lots of different ways you could go. You could end up getting paid by the big companies such as Mercedes and stuff if you take really nice photos to produce photos for them. YouTubers though, there's this whole connection that you have with your subscribers and them commenting and liking and everything, which is particularly special. I mean, I'm biased because I'm a YouTuber. It's just something that I really, really enjoy about being able to put out a video. I, you know, you get to know me, I get to know you. And there's something special about that. A few things you need. So, I film my main, so my Saturday videos and some Wednesday videos on this. Because it's a great camera, I can do photos, I can do videos on it. Um, it's a Nikon D7000. You guys probably know more about it than I do. And so this is a really important thing to have. Another important thing to have if you're doing videos, especially GoPros. Um, so they get you some great driving shots and stick them anywhere inside and outside. And they actually um, have a decent sound as well. One of the most important things about being a car spot is being connected though. You need to know what's happening in your city when it's happening. So as soon as someone sees something, you can get in your car straight away and go and spot it. Definitely really, really important because if you miss everything in your own city, then you don't have a chance when you go to other cities. So that's using things such as Instagram is the one that's starting. There are lots of Facebook groups. I know in France there's a Facebook group called Car Sighters and Car Spotters. I'm sure there's some in the UK for London. And um, just use all of these different things that are given to you to be able to see the most cars you can. You want to be able to be the first one to upload because that's what will make people look at your channel and not the, the big guys with lots of subs. So that's very important. Um, 3G is obviously the key to that. Get a good editing software for your videos. So Final Cut Pro X is what I use. That's expensive. But iMovie is honestly good to get yourself started. And yeah. This video didn't really make much sense, did it? It sort of gives you this opportunity as well to communicate between YouTubers. So... I, I personally know that I make a big effort to talk to other YouTubers and sort of, you know, I, I do these collabs and uh, things like that, which really make a difference, I think, to the way your videos come out because there's something about having this community aspect in, uh, in YouTube, which you don't really have anywhere else, where it's, we really try to help each other. Passporting is a world that is growing, so if you want to get started, you have to get started fairly soon. Another thing is you need to find your own niche. You can't copy what someone else is doing because they'll already be established and you won't be. Some people, and they'll have more experience than you in what you're trying to do. So you're not gonna win that, that battle. So what you need to do is you need to find something that, you know, when you're Googling on internet, there's always that video that you look for but that you don't find. And rather than just not finding it, just make it yourself. Um, and I think that's the beauty of internet. Anyone can give it a go. Anyone can make what they want. And if people like it, great. If they don't, try something new. That's the end of this video then, I guess, because even though we haven't really done anything productive, that's just the way it is. But next week I am actually doing something productive because I'm doing a Q&A. So that's where I'm gonna answer your questions. So if you have any questions about what I do, or just anything at all, please comment below or you can ask me on my Instagram, Seb Delaney, or on my Facebook or Snapchat or anywhere. Just send me your questions. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Um, please remember to like this video, comment for next week's video, and subscribe. Thank you. Bye. That is the Ferrari 488 GTB, and it is here to replace the 458 Italia. It has been all over Instagram, all over the internet. Towards what is called the Fairmont Corner, or the hairpin. Really, really, really well-known spot.